Thank you once again for joining us today at Matoka TV Studio. All right, in today's video, our Father in the Lord, Apostle Arame Osai, disclose um, a truth that will really bless and transform the body of Christ to the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. I would like you to watch this clip, this video, to the end to get a clear understanding of every truth revealed by the God's servant. And let your heart be open to receive this message so that you can apply them into your life. Thank you. Uh, let me introduce a scripture quickly. Philippians chapter 2 verse 13. Philippians chapter 2 verse 13. For it is God which walketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. This man is bringing discernment to us. He, he, the man believes that you, you don't know that it is God. You have not been able to discern God in you. So he's trying to help you discern God in your temple. You are not with me. You know, I will not give you more than you can take. So I'm still... Oh, you have people online. Don't they will not pay for you? He says it is God that works within you. How many of you can detect God when he's walking inside of you? If you cannot, it means that you have not built an intentional life of devotion to God. So whereas you can generate a lot of spirit, spirit power, and God begins to move inside your spirit, you cannot detect. So I've seen believers that know how to generate spirit power, but they don't have detection skills. So this man is saying, it is God that walketh in you. And there are two things he does when he walks within you. The first thing is that he begins to flood your heart with his own desires. That's what the King James, can we change it to NIV? That's what the King James says, go to will you. No, uh, NIV. Ah, there's one translation that says he shares his desires with you. Look for that translation. That's how you will know what message to preach. As I'm praying in tongues, I'm waiting for God to share his desire with me. Are you there? Speaking in tongues. Like this one, I'm preaching it to you today. After three days of speaking in tongues, this afternoon, that's when I take my pen. <laughs> because I was able to hack into his desires. There is a difference between the message and the passage. If I get the message, oh my God, I can find the passage. I can, I can put it in formats, in ways, my own way. And I can put that message with different packaging. And you not know the same message. I can do it four times, four different. Because passages are available. What is scarce is the message from God. And the average believer does not know how to detect message. So this man is saying, it is God. For God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. First of all, there is a desire aspect. This desire aspect is that it brings you into the context of his thoughts. He embosses his thoughts on your thoughts. That's when you begin to mount up with wings like eagles. The purpose of your mounting up is so that you can find what it is in his mind. Sometimes it will take you seven hours of praying in tongue. That's the reason for praying in tongue. Until we get to where we can hack into the thoughts of God. It will take a man that is quiet inside to be able to pick those frequencies when they begin to. Because it builds like a mist. So quietly. You say, ah, oh, okay, this is where you are going. It is God. My question to you this night is, can you identify God when he begins to arise? In your temple. If you can't, you are not a strong man. It is God that walketh in us. And when he begins to walk with us, the first thing he does is that he shares his desires with us. Then when we now understand his desires, he now empowers us to be able to fulfill the desires that he has shared with us. So that we are not working for God, but we are working with God. Our work 
is because he first walked. Are you there? You are not following me. It is because he first walked that I am walking. So if he has not walked, we I can walk. If you understand what I'm talking about. The other pastor has a message till 2026. So even if God is not walking, he's, he's, he's busy. He's busy. If you are like that, you will never master the art of devotion. The man that wants to be devotional is a man that wants to walk the works of God. And if you are going to walk the works of God, the works of God will be walked into you first and you discern it. Then you receive the grace to be able to walk it out of you. So in the works of God, we are walking with God because God first walked into me and that's why I can work it out. But all of these things are impossible if you don't have the capacity to discern God in your temple. You have not built a devotional orientation that has made your heart to be able to understand the alphabet with which is communicated. If I show us those my level scriptures, which I will not, because the way I'm seeing you, 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 you no. I will show you reactions that Jesus made, like before the tomb of Lazarus. Oh, you are not with me. Before the tomb of Lazarus. Okay, let me show you an idea. And I think that's John chapter 11. John chapter 11, I'll read from verse 34 to verse 38, so that you just follow me. 34. And he said, this is Lazarus' death scenario. Where have you made him? And they said unto him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept, so his emotion was in the matter. Then said the Jews, behold, how he loved him. The reason why he was weeping was not because, I know he loved Lazarus, but at that instance, the weeping was not because of love. It was because of their unbelief. He wept that these people could not see that he was the resurrection and the life. Hey, he wept. So it means what this means have been doing for three and a half years. These guys are not... Ah! Have, you, have you been there? A, a genuine pastor knows this kind of weeping. Then Jesus said to the Jews, Behold! Okay. Then some of them said, Could not this man which opened the eyes of the blind have caused that even this man should not have died. They couldn't see that Jesus could raise the dead. They could only see that he could heal the sick. And that was the reason why he was weeping. It means they had not discerned him accurately. Are you there? Jesus therefore, groaning in himself. Now, that groaning that Jesus was groaning inside of him, it was the Spirit of God inside of Jesus that was groaning. That was God walking in the temple of Jesus. You understand that? Now, so I have 11 of these scriptures that say things like this. We can investigate each one and you now see how God, through the Spirit, rises up in the temple of a man that understands the way of devotion. It's after this groaning that took place in the Spirit, which is the Holy Ghost's reaction to all of the things happening in the external environment. That was when Jesus said well this one. It was in response to a walk that the Holy Spirit was walking. Oh, you are not following. Okay. We, we have closed our school. In response. It was not any of the circumstances that Jesus did a miracle. It was not the circumstance that occasioned the miracle. It was God walking in his temple. In this day, he groaned. If we check the root word for groaning in that scripture, you will see the kind of groaning. So Jesus was able to identify when the Holy Spirit in him arose. The reason why he could identify it and recognize what the Holy Spirit wanted to do was because he had trained his heart in the way of devotion to be able to discern the movements of God. This is what differentiates a master from a boy. A boy can pray in tongues. But there will be a situation he can't solve it. Because he cannot, he cannot discern God in his temple. When someone that knows God comes, he will not even pray in tongues. You, you will see him walking like this. It's not as if he's trying to walk with a limp. No, 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 he's ambulating. Oh, Jesus. Oh. Oh. What he's saying in his heart is, the only thing I have is you. Where are you? Don't hide. Come out. Sometimes 
You can find him when he's, he's, he's angry. See, he's moving like, forget about his, oh my God. <laughs> then the man in his temple will begin to come out. And because he has trained himself to devotion, he can discern the way he's coming. But now he's coming to fight. And if you confirm it that he's coming to fight, you say, you begin to prophesy, not because you are powerful, but because you were able to discern the way you came. Oh, can you see the valiant one marching from the wilderness? Do you understand his fragrance? The perfumery, the, 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 the scent with which he comes in his majesty. None of us cannot. <sighs> can you see him? As he rises gradually. Even though he's rising slowly, he's coming to fight. He's coming to fight. And when he's fighting, when he wants to fight, don't back down. Because they will descend him. For it is God that worketh in us, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Once you discern it, then it gives you the power to be able to fulfill what his spirit desires. Oh my God. When you get the psalmist, I will wait. I will wait. He's waiting for his appearing. How do we show up in the temple? Do you still remember Isaiah? In the book of Isaiah chapter 6, he waited. And that day, the Lord manifested and he decided to reveal his holiness. When he revealed his holiness, there was no evangelist in the picture. It was just Isaiah and encounter. And Isaiah began to confess his sin without a preacher. Oh, you're not with me. The temple. Do you know? Do you know how to discern when his dream has filled your temple? So the average believer doesn't know the dialect of God because he has not trained his heart in soberness and intentionality through devotion. Jesus groaning, groaning in himself, groaning in himself. You will hear some scriptures say, and Jesus rejoiced in the spirit. It's after you have discerned what God is doing in the spirit. And when God says rejoice, it can even be a situation of mourning, but he rejoice in the spirit. He said, Father, I thank you. Because you have not revealed these things to the wise. It was after he rejoiced. That's what he said. He discerned his father. He said, Ah, so this is how you want to do it. He didn't know it before. But the moment he began to appear in the temple. He started discerning. I went to preach somewhere and the place was flat. There was no prayer on ground. The only prayer was the one I brought. Demons were everywhere. It was sealed up. There was a maze, a demonic maze there. Unfortunately for the devil, I discerned his movement. And that day, he came for war. The witches that were responsible for the thick atmosphere, they were, they were the first victims of the surge. Do you know how powerful you can be if you discern his movement inside? Because the moment you find his will and his desire, then he gives you the empowerment to effect it. So when I, I knew he wanted to fight, I released him. The three witches that came there to obstruct that meeting were the first victims of that fire. And the fire that came on them was so intense, so intense that it humiliated them and disarmed them of their weapons. If I wanted to, to kill any of them, I knew where to strike because they were bare before my eyes. You are the wisdom before time began. All right, um, thank you so much uh, for your time and I hope the Lord speaks to you through this message. Don't forget to share and don't forget to subscribe for more updates at Matoka TV Studio. All right, thank you and God bless you. Amen.